Yes, it is a surprise. No, I haven't cooked it before. Yes, it is foreign. No, Jason, it's not a hamburger. Yes, Alice and Dolly will love it. No, Nick, no garlic. Adverts like this seem laughable now, but don't laugh too quickly. The gender divide that women fought to close for so long is opening up again during the lockdown like a giant chasm. New research by economists at Cambridge University has found that women are providing around six hours of childcare and homeschooling a day, two hours more than their male partners, and this is regardless of their employment status. And there's also evidence of greater anxiety among women than men about the lockdown. A recent study found that 61% of women are finding it harder to stay positive day to day compared with 47% of men. And there is good reason for that anxiety. Before the pandemic, the employment rate for women of a working age reached a record high of 72.4%. 9.3 million women were working full-time and 6.3 million part-time. So will women feel the impact of COVID-19 on their work life as well as their home life long after they've been unlocked? Well, joining me now is the former Australian Prime Minister, Julia Gillard from Adelaide, and businesswoman, the former CEO of Virgin Money, Jane Angadia. Good evening to both of you. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, first of all, Jane Ann, um, a survey uh, because of the pandemic said that um, women's incomes are expected to fall by 26% compared to an 18% drop in earnings for men coming out of this pandemic. Has the coronavirus pu pushed back Oh, the gender equality and the gender equality that's so important to you in your business. Well, it, it, that's certainly not inevitable, is it, Kirsty? We need really great business leadership to make it not so. And the reason that I think it's critical that we keep gender equality at the very top of the agenda for business people is that it's proven that where you get diverse teams, diverse management teams, people that are making decisions much better than if they are just, frankly, white men that have the same background and think in the same way, it improves productivity, it improves the economy. And so the damage would be done if CEOs think that they've got a crisis to deal with and gender equality therefore becomes no more a priority. It's even more of a priority than ever. Women need to get back into the workforce, be part of the decision making, part of the team, and then both productivity, the economy, and indeed society is going to flourish as a consequence. But leaders must make that happen, not allow us to fall back to the stories that you've previously told us. Uh, Julia, um we know that men have suffered medically greater during uh, the pandemic than women. They are more susceptible to this infection. But it seems from the research that women are suffering societally, you know, from, you know, from anxiety to not eating properly, to, to, to shouldering a lot of what goes on in the house, whether they're trying to hold down a job at home as well. Um, I mean, this is having a real impact on a lot of women who feel that they are not having their place and actually that they are falling behind. I think that's right. I think that there are some causes for concern and some causes for optimism. Uh, at the Global Institute for Women's Leadership at King's College London, we're researching away, looking at all of this. Uh, the things that are concerning, of course, is that this crisis comes on top of underlying gender inequalities. So things like domestic work are unequally shared between men and women. And then you put homeschooling and lockdown on top of that. It means women are doing more. Then when we look at the job losses in this crisis, many of them have been in industries that are populated by women. And of the people in the front line, around 70% of the workforce in our health and caring professions are women. But the note of optimism I would take is this, we are being forced to experiment in all ways with virtual working, uh, doing things like this, but everybody um, who was office bound now working from home. We're hoping that businesses can learn from this period and actually take the best of virtual and flexible working with them so that we do enable women and men in the future to better balance work and family life. But it's important to, as it were, get out of lockdown as quickly as possible to start this because you know, the figures for loss of income are pretty stark if we don't, Julia. Of course, everybody wants to see economies restart right around the world and for employment to grow. Uh, this has been a crisis that has put so much financial strain on so many people. 
But we, as we go back to work, know that we won't simply be going back to exactly yes, what yeah. was before the days of the crisis. There will still need to be social distancing and the like. So, and we're advocating as we rethink what yeah. work should look like, let's think with gender and flexibility planned in rather than uh, not worry about that and then wake up in five or ten years' time and realise that we've missed an yeah. opportunity to create a more a gender equal but, but Jane, and I wonder if there, there is at the heart of this also the idea that women themselves are in some way conditioned to stepping in, doing more at home, taking the burden on, because it's just some kind of legacy. And it's also something they're very good at. Women are very good at negotiating their way through difficult circumstances. I agree, but uh, I did some research with my team on this a couple of years ago, and what women say is that, of course, they want to undertake the role of carer, whether that's as a parent or looking after someone else, um, but they do want to work as well. And as we've heard, you know, even in the last couple of years, women, women have been saying, to the extent that I do a desk job, let me have the technology. Mm -hmm. That means I can work from home and I can be flexible. And so I really am optimistic that this new way of working will help women in particular. But let's be clear, this isn't just about women. This is about getting lockdown over and done with so that men and women can get the economy pro productive mm. again. And we need to hold people to account by continuing to ma measure the gender pay gap. You put out some numbers there that show that women lose earnings uh, disproportionately to men. That would be wrong. We do need to hold businesses to making sure that men and women are paid the same for the same job and that women and men alike can pro progress through the company and take more senior jobs right. if that's what they want, either in the office or through technology. But Thanks. it must be important to business.